Okay. Wait, am I live now? Oh boy. Okay, hold on. Everyone, this is... This is meant to be a test. Because I am potentially going to be doing this later. Yeah, okay. Yep, yep, there it is. That's... <laughs> there it is, live for, uh... <laughs> For everyone to see. Excellent. Um. <laughs> there it is. Live for, uh. <laughs> for everyone yeah. to see. Okay. Excellent. Cool. Looks uh, like there are. <laughs> I was just checking, checking my own stream, and it looks like there are people here. <laughs> Hi, guys. Wow. I'm shocked. I'm surprised people showed up for this. Uh, this was very impromptu. Mostly I was thinking to myself, wow, it, it might be a wise and cool idea. Wait, there's an echo? Vindalia, is there an echo? Is there an echo? You guys tell me, is there an echo? Hello? I rely on you guys to be my, uh, my guide here. This is my first time streaming from OBS. <laughs> Play horror games? <laughs> no, stupid horror energy. We're playing Valheim today. Um, because that's easy and not stressful, and I'm an epic gamer at Valheim. I'm very good at it. Very, very good. Okay, cool. Um, say, hey, neat. Okay, sweet. This looks like, uh, looks like this was a piece of cake, getting this started. Um, I guess let's game. <laughs> uh, sweet. I'm surprised I figured this out. I wasn't expecting it. Um... So I've kind of got chat pulled up to the side, um, so I can see you guys and keep track of what you're saying to me and how you're insulting my gaming ability. Is- <laughs> Broccoli- <laughs> Broccoli Man. Is this stream AIG approved? Um, great question. Probably not, I would imagine, because there's monsters and no creationism, which is, of course, a huge bummer. <laughs> Alright, cool. Let's start. So I've played Valheim before. This is mostly a prep for uh, later this week. I was thinking about playing Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey, um, which is supposed to be very fun, and by very fun I mean difficult and frustrating. So it's gonna be very, very awesome, very based in Epic. I, I tried playing it once before, uh, so I've got a little experience with the game. Not Valheim, but Ancestors. Uh, and I'm very bad at it, but we're gonna be doing it for the science, of course. Um, this is my character named Socks, but we're not going to be using Socks. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to do a new character. Okay, do it. What do we think? Male or female? How God created them. <laughs> Indie Woods, looking very Diablo-esque so far. Who, me or my character? <laughs> hmm. I think we, I think we definitely want to go with... I think we're going to go boy mode. Dylan Kerrigan says, Anthony's is just pretty cool platinumed it last year. Eat all the things. <laughs> yeah, the problem is when I first started playing it, uh, I was eating all the things, and then my my poor hominin got very sick. And, um, <laughs> Vandalia 1988, female, put yourself in the character. Do we want to go Gibbo mode? Okay, let's see. Ah, uh, yes. The very feminine. <laughs> very feminine Gibbon. Okay, let's see. Hair. What does my hair look like? Okay, we've got a couple of options here. This is very me, I think. This spike in the back. Uh, very Charmeleon. Cherry Pena, can you go with they? No, Valheim is not progressive enough, unfortunately. Um, but this channel is for... This channel is pro-trans and pro-non-binary rights, obviously. Ponytail 1. Ponytail 2. Dude, that second ponytail sucks. <laughs> You know, when I think Viking, I think this haircut. That's that's pretty slick. That reminds me of uh, you know what this looks like. This looks like one half of the haircut that um, Ro Rosamund Pike. It, she she was recently in this movie called uh, I Care a Lot. This is a very like pseudo Karen haircut. That's a funny looking Mario. <laughs> Ian Aspie of the Village. This is a game called Valheim. Um, played it quite a bit before, um, because I'm very, a very epic gamer. Um, the only gaming stream that you need, naturally. Aaron Judge, hello. Hello, Aaron Judge! This is kind of a more interactive stream where we can kind of all hang out together. Um, 
Anybody got any tea in the chat? This this one is very me, I feel. I feel like this is the kind of hair. Fernando, Katie, Katie. Opinion on the Mankind Human Oranges. That game I'm streaming later this week. That's what this is a prep for, to make sure that I can actually handle streaming a game. Yeah, you can. You definitely do return to Monkey in that game, Fernando. Um, that's the entire... That's the entire uh, positive of the game, because it's very difficult. That's a given. Thank you for all the art prompts. I will now use Sivapithecus as a D&D home. Hell yes, Miguel. That is awesome. Yeah, Sivapithecus is really, really cool. Um, most likely? Let's see, do we want to give her a beard? I can't give her a beard. Damn. Thanks, Valheim. Zero out of ten game. Um, yeah, Sivapithecus is awesome. Sivapithecus is, at least according to the literature right now, it's looking very much like Sivapithecus is going to be... Um, Kind of a, kind of the root of Pongo of the Pongids. Oh, let's see what do I want to do with blonde. Ooh, looks kind of like a hood. Kind of looks like a hood. Hey, David Barnes, we're gaming here today. Uh, I'm just gonna go with the brown. Okay, cool. This is me. Awesome. This is my character. Oh, damn it! <laughs> And now we have to restart. Okay, we're, we're not going to put that much effort into it this time. I don't think I can stomach... I get too stressed out about character creation. Uh, okay. My character is swole. Yeah, I know. She's pretty, uh... <laughs> she's pretty intense. Um, name. We're going with... Gibbo. Perfect. Very strong. Yeah. That's kind of the name of the game. So, Eric, are you going to 100% this game since Vandalia 1998? Um, funny story, funny story about Ryan, uh, Heinle, love your channel fam, hey thank you, a uh, funny story about this game, my, uh, back when there was this huge snowstorm where I live, I live in the south unfortunately, um, but back in the, uh, back when there was that huge snowstorm a couple of weeks ago, myself and my fiance and my future brother-in-law and, uh, two other friends of ours, downloaded this game and decided to play it uh, but I was late to the party so I was just like getting ganked at every opportunity by every single enemy um, because it's <laughs> kind of a hard game it's like a survival open world game crafty style game I guess <laughs> anyways I was getting my ass kicked at pretty much every turn and they'd already beat the first two bosses so here I am like fighting the third boss which is this horrible horrible boss called the bone mass and I was just relegated to arrow duty making arrows for the rest of the gang and I decided then and there that I would no longer be uh, on the sidelines. I was going to be the epic hero for the for the fourth boss. So we haven't actually played since then. It's been a couple weeks. And in the meantime, I've been playing this game by myself uh, and getting really, really good at it. <laughs> so that I can go back and play with everyone else and not embarrass myself. So it's, it's you know, I haven't had my moment of glory yet, but we'll get there. Um... Yeah, but this is a game called Valheim. Let's see. Okay, yeah, we're gonna start. And we wanna do a new world. And we're gonna call our new world... Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think we should call it? What should we call the new world? Anybody got any, like, funny memes in the chat for me on this one? Any memes in the chat for a world name? Wow, we have 27 people tuned into this? Why? <laughs> Fernando says, what if Kong existed? God, wouldn't that be great? Oops, Miguel's first. Guess we're calling it Gibbonia. Sick. Gibbotopia. <laughs> okay. Gibbonia one. Sorry, Matthew. Fernand or Miguel was first. Ken Ham's Folly. <laughs> Dinosaur Adventure Land. Damn, that would have been perfect. Mushroom Kingdom 2, Monkey Land, Monkey. Yeah, those are all really good. Too bad we already did Gibbo Land, Gibbonia. Um, the good news is now it's not responding. <laughs> so we might get a second chance. <laughs> we want to see your pro gamer skills. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, I am an epic gamer. Uh, I'm waiting on all my sponsorships uh, from like G Fuel and other. I don't know. What are other gaming. I wonder other epic gamer, uh, like, sponsor dudes. Okay, long ago, the Allfather Odin united the worlds, he threw down his foes and cast them into the tenth world, then split the bows that held their- Okay, so this is, like, lore. Um, yeah, so the, the, um, 
The background of this game is I'm like a dead warrior in the afterworld of the Vikings, uh, and I'm like prepping to fight the, the afterworld bad guys. Um, I, <laughs> let me regale you with that tale. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, we're just about to do some, uh, some sick, some sick gaming. Sunflower said world name would have been a, world name would have been good. I'm never good at the, uh, at the naming. The cool thing is we're being carried by this giant crow, a corvid, if you will. A good choice picking a corvid. Corvids are best birds. There are some other pretty cool birds out there, but most of them are extinct. I'm, I'm a big fan of Host's eagle. Anybody else in on Host's eagle? The big, big ol', big ol' eagle, bird of prey. I'm not steering this guy. He's just about to drop me in the middle of nowhere. Such is, such is the way that Valheim works. Sweet. Is he on top of the food? Yeah, probably. Yeah, they are goth birds, aren't they? He brings tidings. Thank you, Hugin. So he's guiding me. He's like telling me these are all like the sacrificial stones and stuff. The Moa Eater, true. Just I, I'm not really sure why you're into the pez into the pheasants. Ooh, warthogs kick your ass in this game early on. That looks more like an eagle with white legs. Yeah, I'm not sure why the legs are that color, if I'm being totally honest. Um, but they are, so whatever. So we need sticks. So the first thing you gotta do in this game is make like a club or like an axe. It's kind of like Minecraft rules. Like they 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 drop your ass in a place that's scary, and then you have to uh, you have to like start fending for yourself. The good news is it's a pretty it's a pretty chill game. I usually listen to this when I'm uh, <laughs> inundating myself with either true crime content. Or debates, or watching Chopped. It's like my it's like my unwind game. After uh, it's my unwind game after being stressed out during the day and working on my thesis or dealing with emails and creationists and you know the usual drivel. Okay, so now we're collecting stones, dude. I'm not sure. So, okay, so I've played this game. Okay, bye, Miguel. Have fun at class. Do enemies come at night? Don't know anything about this game. Yeah, uh, there's more enemies at night, Tim, but generally the area that I'm in right now, this biome, it's called the meadow. It's decently safe this early in the game. Uh, mostly the enemies are going to start coming at night, yes, but they're especially bad in biomes that aren't this nice meadow. They live mostly in, like, the dark forest and the shitty-ass swamp that kills me every time and other similar frustrating places. See, this is an enemy. That's okay. We're gonna box him. Take this boy out. Just upping my... <laughs> I'm upping my unarmed skills. I like when you <laughs> when you actually start hitting these dudes, they start kind of bailing out. Kind of reminds me of uh, kind of reminds me of um, creationists when you ask them any scientifically rigorous question. That's right, we're dunking on him even here, even in Val, huh? <laughs> these little dudes, they ca they're called necks, and I'm not really sure why they're called that. Um, they I think you could have gone with like a cockatrice. That would have been like a pretty cool cockatrice. You know, the, uh, the rooster dragon guys, medieval style. Alright, I am definitely too weak to be around these guys right now. Goose pot. I love me some Valheim. True, Fernando. Yeah, it... Minecraft would be a lot better if it had monkey in it. I, a monkey is an improvement to any kind of gamer experience. Uh, which is why we're gonna be playing Ancestors on this channel. Um because it's like a true re true return to form. Monkey craft? Yeah, I wish. Someone get on that, mod it. If we could mod monkey into Minecraft, that would be... That's like, that's my one dream. I almost played Fall Guys just because you could do the, uh, 
put on the monkey uniform. Have you played the forest? I have not played the forest. Is it good? Finally. Sticks. Okay. Sticks are the sticks and stones are the lifeblood of this game, my guys. You uh you might as well not play it at all if you don't have enough sticks. Step one is gonna be making ourselves a rudimentary shelter. That's like the hardest part of this thing. I play Valorant and Mythgard. Cool. I've heard Valorant can be pretty fun. Okay. We need to craft one of these guys. And then we need... God, see what I mean? It's a stick collecting game. Just more horror. If you did a mod, you could create a Gibbon character. Yeah, I would create a Gibbon character. Doing a Gibbon in, uh this game. See that again, I can't stress this enough you guys. This is why we are <laughs> This is why we're going to be playing um Ancestors because Ancestors is a game where I can live out <laughs> my ultimate fantasy <laughs> of being a very hungry, very scared monkey. Micro Raptor, have you played Yeah, that's what we're that's what I'm talking about. Um I've played it very lightly, but I want to play it more intensely. Um Oh, Ryan. Good. Good. I'm glad I pronounced it correctly. I, uh, I definitely sympathize with pronouncing names incorrectly. Erica is just such an awesome person, clever, and even a gamer. <laughs> Tell my fiancé that. He doesn't have... Sometimes I remind him. I say, you realize you're living the fantasy, right? Gamer GF? And, uh, and he laughs and tells me that that only counts if you're good at games. <laughs> Little in Brooklyn Faust. Fantasy of having a tail. Um, yeah, I would love a prehensile tale. There's, there is a myth in the understanding of human evolution that we used to have prehensile tails, but we evolved from circopithecid monkeys, which means no tail for us. We've also got an axe, finally. Um, our tails were, our tails used to be useless. They, they were kind of like uggo tails that were kind of crooked, probably Egyptopithecus style tails. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking, you know, a tail is only fun if it's if it's cool and prehensile, right? Like, what's the point of having a tail if you can't grab stuff with it? You know, then it's just an, it just it's just another thing you can sit on, accidentally or stub it, slam it in a door. It's just like it's got to be rough, right? But then you you know you you get to see your uh, you get to see the uh, what are your thoughts on Super Saiyan Four? Super Saiyans, like in DBZ context? If I was a Saiyan, I would keep my tail. Because those dudes are prehensile. LR, just got here. I was looking for some science. <laughs> You're gonna find it here. This is a Valheim playthrough, baby. We're, uh... Only the... <laughs> only the most high-quality content. Willow Hovind argues evolution is false because tails would be useful. Yeah, Kent Hovind is an idiot. Um... Actually, I don't I don't know that he's an idiot per se. He he very well might know exactly what he's doing. Please destroy Kent Hovind again. Yeah, I, I got the opportunity to debate Kent again a couple of months ago. Um and I thought about it. And then I was like, you know, Kent let that kid drown at his uh at DAL, which is where I want to have my wedding, by the way. Um and I'm just not sure that I'm down with that, you know? Like I'm not down necessarily supporting that, uh, and drawing attention to Ken. Because Ken is pretty otherwise irrelevant. Um, he's fun to talk to, though, for sure. Okay, let's see. I think we're gonna want to build our shelter over here. For the time being. Look at this, dude. Yeah! You gotta show these graylings who's boss. Cosplay wedding. Yeah. That would be dope. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I, uh, my fiance and I, we've been trying to decide when we want to do the wedding. Um, and COVID has just really screwed things up. It's hard to, uh, I hope he goes to jail again, Ryan. Yes. <laughs> no, Ken, Ken is going to, uh, successfully win his lawsuit against the U.S. government for however many millions of dollars he's currently suing them for. Uh, which is just golly can you imagine like honestly i really and truly wish that i had the kind of confidence that kent hoven had 
If I had the confidence Kent Hovind had, like, taking on the U.S. government like that, I feel like I would, um... I feel like I could achieve almost anything. Like, you, you've got a man who went to jail for tax fraud or evasion or whatever. I don't know the details of it. I don't care much for law. But, um, he, he goes to jail for a crime that he essentially just did commit, based off of everything I've seen, at least. And, uh... And the man is just like, you know, I think I'll just sue the government for this. <laughs> Clearly I am innocent. <laughs> You're gonna wear a Hawaiian shirt to your wedding. Yeah, I would love to. <laughs> Cosplaying as Kent. The Hawaiian shirt is one of my favorite things about him. He's actually just a very funny guy, if <laughs> be quite honest. Um, okay, let's see here. We need a rudimentary shelter before it gets dark. We'll do one right over here. I don't think Ken Hoven cares if he's correct. He just wants the money. Yeah, he knows he's got a real sweet gig, honestly. He he really does know that he's got a sweet gig going on. And he does. He's got people living out at that compound, just like doing whatever for him. I mean, he really does have a pretty, pretty nice setup out there. <laughs> Although he does have to live in Alabama. I'm not so sure about that one. Okay, let's see. Gotta, gotta become a master at hopping up on these, on these deals. What is this game? Polygon Minecraft. This is a game called Valheim. It's it's Viking Minecraft, uh, essentially. It's a little better than Viking Viking Minecraft. I mean, don't get me wrong. Minecraft is awesome, but I don't have a hoe in this game, so I can't. I don't have one yet, so I can't flatten the ground. Come to think of it, this is kind of a garbage place to build our house. What are your thoughts on spooky games? They scare me immensely. I'm a huge fan of horror movies, um, but I'm very afraid of them. We're gonna go over here and do this. Uh, I think the scariest horror movie I've seen as of late was definitely uh, Hereditary. That that movie's pretty. <laughs> that movie's pretty intense. It's a little much for me, actually. I uh, it definitely kind of wigged me a bit. Let's see. Gotta build the shed before the zombies come. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's it's not really zombies so much we're worried about this game, so much as uh, there are these little dwarf dudes called Graylings. And they'll just come and wreck your shit. They, they really will. Just come and wreck your shit. Thoughts on Matt Pal? Matt Pal is a dingus. Um, I don't- I actually try not to watch <laughs> very much of Matt Pal at all, because I'm worried that my, uh, my IQ points will go down just by interacting the uh, photon with his with his very being. Ian, I gotta go. Oh, 310 in the UK? Yeah, get out of here, my guy. Go to bed. I went to bed dreadfully late last night, so I can't I can't really talk. Would you play Factorio or Dyson Sphere? My fiance is obsessed with the Dyson Sphere. He uh he's like Dyson Sphering it up pretty much all the time. Um and he's quite good at it when I come in and see it. But I'm not really that good at um I'm not really that good at... What's the word I'm looking at? Idols? Is that what you call them? I don't know. I'm not very good at them. I don't have the patience. Yeah, F Matt Pal. <laughs> yeah. But he's he's honestly... I just don't think he's worth the time, to be quite frank. Okay, sweet. I love it when these guys come and mess my... Get out of here, dude. I don't even have a weapon, so I'm just hitting him with an axe. <laughs> Flat Earthers love Kent Hovind, which annoys Kent. Yeah, I think that's really funny that fl <laughs> he does it. He appears to attract the flat earthers, and his attitude about that is, you know, why do the flat earthers like me? I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Uh, <laughs> which you're kind of like, hmm. <laughs> Kent, <laughs> have you ever considered, and I know this is wild, but have you ever considered that maybe you are a conspiracy theorist? Um, because his whole science wrong, Kent Hovind, P three PhDs, graduate of Patriot University Hovind, knows better than the, uh, than the scientific community is very funny to me. Uh, what anime do you watch? Ooh, what anime do I watch? What anime have I watched recently? It's actually been some time, a couple, a little while since I've watched anime, um, even though I, I do like it very much. Let me think, what is the last anime I watched? Um, the first anime I probably watched this year was 
actually when Luke and I first got into anime, we started watching um, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which was good. And then we watched B Stars to for the meme and for the furries, obviously. <laughs> and uh, then he kind of took a break from anime, and I watched a little bit more. I watched Parasite, which I liked quite a bit. And then I watched some of Hunter Hunter, which was pretty good. I watched BNA, that was good. Devil Man Cry Baby, that was good. Um, I actually can't think of the last anime I saw that actually just kind of sucked. Damn, I need more wood. Yo, TV! Would love to see Hoven debate a flat earther. Dude, that is my dream debate, actually. I, I've, uh... I want nothing more than to watch Kent Hoven debate a flat earther. I want an excuse to root for Kent. I really do. Um, Kent's, Kent's grift is just too good. Why on earth would he do anything other than what he's doing right now? Oh, hey, Dapper. Um, yeah, I didn't tell the gang on Twitter, because I just kind of decided to do this spur of the moment. Um, but I'm playing Valheim currently, uh, and just chatting with the gang. I mostly just did this dapper so that I could know how to do it for later this week, because I'm planning on streaming Ancestors. Okay, okay, stop glitching out. Woohoo! We have a functioning shelter. That's for this evening. Now we need more freaking stones. See, I told you, I, what did I say? I said, the lifeblood of this game is sticks and stones. It's all picking up rocks and uh sticks and then fighting monsters and talking to the crow huge in um okay okay yeah thank you monkey the game yeah true bye matthias i will i will enjoy the game and this was very again i, I wasn't actually expecting anybody to show up for this um but I'm grateful that you guys are here. Thank you for... <laughs> Thank you for showing up for this. I do appreciate it. Okay, so. Now we have a functioning house. Why don't you have more subs? You need to team up with Aaron Ra again from Shay Zeus. Aaron, I really do enjoy Aaron. I, I think he's a sweet guy. He's he's very nice. Um, let's see. What, um, stone axe. We already have that. Wooden arrows. Damn. I think we're going to have to kill some boars. It's a pain in the ass because those guys kill me. I want to see someone annoy Kent as much as he annoys others. Not scientifically possible, my friend. Uh, Kent is master class at what he does. Uh, and that's annoy others. If you stream it, they will come. That's true, Dapper. Yeah, someone's... It seems like there was nothing really going on tonight, so I was kind of like, well, I might as well give it a shot. You know, we'll see. Where does the username Gutsy Gibbon come from from Microraptor? A uh, good question. Uh, I do all the art on my channel, um, and I that's because I enjoy doing cartoons. I love making cartoons. I think it's very fun. And uh, I ended up drawing a very sickly looking Gibbon very close to when I was about to make my Reddit account. And I was like, well, I kind of like the, this kind of looks like a sickly Gibbon. It kind of looks like a gut sick Gibbon. And uh, I was like, I guess I'll just I'll call this little cartoon Gutsy Gibbon. I was pretty proud of it. I had it as an avatar and a lot of things for a while. And um, then I made a Reddit account, like I said, using the, the username, because I was like, well, I might as well. Very close to that time period. And my Reddit account is just Gutsy underscore Gibbon. G underscore Gibbon. Circles pretty much around what I do here on YouTube. A lot of busting creationism over on the Debate Evolution subreddit. Where you can also find some of the other regulars here on YouTube as far as dunking on creationism goes. And, um, yeah, when I made my YouTube channel, I was like, I kept making these posts that over and over again were just conglomerations of these uh, research write-ups that I was kind of doing because I used to get coffee once a week with a coworker of mine who was a very, very vocal young earth creationist. And I thought, well, someone should get something out of this. And I can edit a little, so maybe I, maybe I just make a YouTube channel and... So that's what I did. And I just went with Gutsy Gibbon because it was the name I already had. And it's, so it's basically, it's a cartoon monkey. That's the long and short. <laughs> uh, LR, are you vegan? I'm not vegan. I'm trying to eat more vegetarian. Um, I'm trying to eliminate more and more meat from my diet. I probably have red meat once every two weeks or so. And me and my fiance mostly eat vegetarian, I think. But that is not to say that veganism is not a good thing. It 
it's certainly a good thing for the environment, 100%. If I were to go vegan, it wouldn't be for moral reasons. It would be for, uh, for environmental reasons. Uh, Dinophilus is not a leopard. It's a saber tooth. You did a video of that. Ah, yep, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I, every now and again, I need to do a video where I basically go back and I'm like, hey, here are some things I screwed up on. Um, I tend to know a lot about monkey and not that much about classification of other animals. Okay, let's see if we can't sneak up on these deer. Because we got to get some leather scraps. Are environmental reasons, not moral reasons. Well, some people take the stance dapper that it's... Uh, that it is inherently wrong to to take and kind of uh, impose suffering on another living being. That that in and of itself is considered colloquially, I think, to be the moral reason for veganism. Do a Tony Reed? Yeah, I do need to do that. TD. I need a Tony Tony Reed style would be good. This is a ten. Do you think eating meat is moral in your worldview? I don't really. I don't really know. I. I try not to get too hung up on being morally consistent right now in my life because my opinions are changing so frequently. I'm trying to kind of figure out what I think. Um, this wasn't very vegan of me to kill this boar. Um, but I think it's a really good question. I, I have on my list of videos for making uh, a, a video that's essentially titled like, is veganism the natural human diet? No. It's definitively not. Uh, but should we probably do it anyways? Yes. Um, I think I think the ideal human diet, at least from what I understand, based off of where we're at with supplements right now, is meat once a week around, um, with primarily fruits and vegetables and grains, things like that, uh, as your as your diet. But that being said. <sighs> I, I don't even know where we're at, like, as far as where we're at, climatically speaking, I don't know that everybody going vegetarian or even vegan is, is going to be enough at that point, which is really depressing. Um, Aaron Rodney Thompson. Nathan Thompson. Yeah, dude. Aaron Rod debating Nathan Thompson was destined to be a complete disaster because Aaron has very little patience for bullshit and uh, Nathan is nothing but bullshit. Well, meat is very important. Chimps eat meat. Yeah, they don't eat very much of it, um, but they do eat it. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't think we're at the place with supplements, again, uh, as far as like absorption rates go. Cause, so I, I take, I'm on a birth control shot called Depo-Provera, which saps my calcium. And I have to be very careful about when I take supplements for calcium and what kind of calcium I integrate into my diet uh, for maximum absorption, because the body's just not that good at pulling uh, chemicals from supplements, at least compared to um, to natural food stuffs. I, ju I just don't know that we're there yet. I want to get there. I want lab meat to get there too. But yeah, I mean, like the ideal human diet is uh, at least according to what we can do to sustain the environment. Like I think it, I think it's more realistic to try to get everybody to reduce meat consumption rather than try to get everybody to go vegan. I think that's kind of a lost cause. People get too angry. Yeah, they, Ryan says, it's amazing that chimps eat monkeys. Yeah. Um, the neat thing is, is that chimpanzees, actually the subspecies of chimps, uh, of genus pan in general, so species, subspecies and subspecies of chimps and then bonobos, uh, they change their meat depending on where they're living. So some eat small ungulates, like uh, dick dick, dyke dyke, not actually 100% sure how you say it. Uh, and others eat, of course, colobus monkeys. And I mean, these guys aren't that fast on the ground, but they are devils in the trees. So it would make sense for a chimpanzee to to go more for arboreal species than for little dudes just chilling out on the ground. Fernando, is acne a human only thing or do other apes have it too? Um, well, acne as far as what we have on our faces is pretty, is pretty limited to the hominins because of how much we sweat, how much more we sweat than they do. It's a natural consequence of our, of our adaptions for being really, really good at producing liquid out of our pores. Can't we just take blood from the slaughterhouse and turn it into a <laughs> Yeah. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? If only there was blood and oil. They eat leopard cubs. I've actually not heard of that. I hadn't heard that they were going after carnivorans. Yeah, meat, well, I mean, 
you have a natural proclivity for meat. I'm reading a book called uh, Kindred right now. Where is it? It's over there. But um, it discusses how Neanderthals, uh, which are cousins, of course, their isotopic signatures, like when you look at their bones and things of that nature, are actually indistinguishable from obligate carnivores, which is very interesting. Uh, even in air, like every once in a while, you'll stumble across one that has a more uh, heavily omnivorous signature, but they look like carnivores. That's how much meat they were eating. And it makes sense because these guys were much heavier than us. They were shorter, but they were heavier, stockier, and had larger brains than we did, even though it was all going to their occipital lobe. Uh, but yeah, they, I mean, if you're living on the ancient, if you're living on the ancient savanna or stumbling across the Eurasian steppes, uh, you're you're not going to be able to cut it on on grasses or on sedges, and there there aren't going to be any delicious fruits or anything like that growing out on those steps. So migrating out of Africa, at least in part, facilitated a much heavier reliance on on meats um, because they're just so damn caloric. Interestingly enough, I, I was kind of floored by this, but. Based off of the cut marks that we have on the uh, remains that Neanderthals have left behind, it looks like what they're doing is eating mostly organs uh, and really high lipid, high fat content um, from what they're killing and and, uh, and harvesting from, because those high that that fat would have been so key for surviving out there. The leaner meat was not was not on their agenda. A YouTuber said something I liked. Why would you limit your god? Evolution definitely more amazing than just God made it. Yeah, some of you probably know this about me, but I, I used to be pretty strongly TE, so theistic evolution. Uh, I'm pretty firmly agnostic now. I don't, I don't really I'm trying to figure out what I think about all that. Uh, but regardless, yeah, there's, I think that a young earth creationist view is just so myopic, honestly. Uh, to, to propose that everything has to be individually made and rather than a mechanism implemented so that the tinker doesn't have to keep coming back and tinkering. Seems really silly to me. But, th but the main reason that I think young earth creationism is inconsistent, even within their own theology, is because it, it goes against God's inherent nature. Like, he, he's depicted as this perfect deity, right? And he is just, and he is truthful, and he is uh, righteous. And then he turns around and he's like, hey, but you see everything around you that indicates the Earth is very ancient, uh, and that you are just monkey. And that's all bullshit. Uh, you actually, you actually are. Hold on, I'm about to get this dude. Yeah, got him. Her. This is gonna be key for later. Yeah, <laughs> apathism is the way to go for me. TBH. Yeah, same. Uh, Jesse says, "What game is this? This is Valheim. This is like Viking Minecraft, which is what I'm calling it." Now we can return to the base, get this meat on the grill. Speaking of meat. Yeah, Neanderthals are just inbred hyper-mutating humans, of course. Yeah. Forget about it. Anyways, yeah. I, I, what I was saying about all that is kind of like, yeah, it's. I just don't think God would be a perfect, omnibenevolent, omniscient. Uh, what's the other one? Omnibenevolent, omniscient, and omnipotent? Yeah. And then turn around and have everything he's made be deceitful by its nature. Oh uh, yeah, Dapper, this music is super soothing. It's a pretty good game. But right now we're in baby mode. We're trying to just survive. We really need a bow. And my house sucks right now. Why is... Why is Hugin in the house? Yeah, thank you, Hugin. Would you like your subscribers like? T would your subscribers like Team Dodgeball Valheim streams? I can guarantee you that they would. I can't. I literally can't get to my own workbench. <laughs> Let me get in. Okay, let's see. Guys, we might have a fatal flaw <laughs> in this house. <laughs> oh, sweet! We've got the uh, sweet. We've got the hoe finally, and we need eight leather scraps for a crude bow. The crude bow is necessary for this game, as is as is the uh, as is the hoe. We're definitely gonna need to go hunt some more boars. Okay, cool. Let's go hunt some more boars. The music is nice, but some, it would be more appropriate. Yeah, probably, probably. Fernando, <laughs> do I like Pokemon? 
I, I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> I love Pokemon. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of Pokemon, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, not so much the newer games, although I, I do play them. I have played Sword and Shield. And I did enjoy playing them. I just... The Dexit thing kind of pissed me off. Um, the Dexit thing kind of pissed me off. And I also really don't like how routes have become super linear. Like, part of the fun of Pokemon was, like, exploring them. And, uh, exploring, like, the world. The routes. All that stuff. Let's get this boar here. No, sir. Dad. Okay, do we have enough? Finally. Okay. We can go back and make that bow. And maybe we'll pick some rocks up on the way back. The real question is, what's your favorite race class combo in D&D? Um, I am definitely a barbarian. I like hitting things. Um... So I like picking a really brutish character like a Dragonborn going in for like a, uh, like a Dragonborn Barbarian and then picking a character trait that's like, he's afraid of spiders or she's nervous about public speaking or whatever. Like one of my favorite tropes is the big guy who's actually very soft. That's like one of my favorite, um, media tropes. Yeah, we've got a huge problem with this house. This house sucks. Why didn't you guys tell me my house sucked? Okay, let's see. Okay, now we can make a better house. And why can't I make my crude bow? Okay, we need more wood. Okay, we'll go cut down some trees. Newer games aren't as good. Sun and moon. Yeah. Oh yeah, Gen 4. Oh shit, I'm on fire. Okay. Interesting that... Oh wait, I'm an idiot. Just kidding. Just kidding. Forget I said anything. Thank you, David Barnes. I'm glad to have you here. And get some rest. They took away my favorite starter totodile. Yeah, dude. Not a fan of that. I was not a fan of that. At all. Of the Dexit. Um, they took a lot of my favorites away, too. Imagine. Draco Rex. Yeah, yeah wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, the, the, whole, the whole fossil Pokemon thing is... It's a huge opportunity for Nintendo, if we're being totally honest. Like, I would love... <laughs> wouldn't it be sick to have, like, a, uh, a Pokemon where the main storyline... A Pokemon game where the main storyline was like, Holy shit, we accidentally brought back too many extinct Pokemon. And then they're, like, all based off of really awesome um, extinct fauna. LOL, when you do these, you should have a Vader Rekip and Avatar. <laughs> yeah. I'm really riding that line, Mr. Wilford, between, like, the... Uh, the irritated furry YouTuber with, like, the little avatar with the crossed arms uh, that's talking about, like, animated shows and stuff like that. Like, I'm already really close to being one of those. But the thing is, and here's the real discourse, guys. The real discourse is rooted in the... <laughs> the real discourse is rooted in the, the problem with furries. Like, you can't have a primate that is your furry avatar. It totally defeats the purpose. You're already a primate. Which leads me to my hot take. Humans are all furries because we are all animals. I wish Fossil Fighters came back. If yeah, Fossil Fighters was fun as hell. <laughs> Pokemon should be more realistic. They should evolve into crab. Yeah, true, Dapper. Yeah, if Pokemon were realistic, they would only be... They would only be crab. You should have... You haven't seen Twitter, true. VTuber, God. Let me just, let me just, let me just die then. Thank you, Hugin. Thank you for telling me the shit I already know. Okay, now we can create a better home. And I was really liking the idea of building over here on this island. Where the deer are. Stealing their home. Uh, but there's also too many rocks in the way. I'm not... Krabby is the ultimate Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Krabby is the ultimate Pokemon. Krabby is 100% the ultimate Pokemon. I'm kind of basic. I, I, I do like a lot of the Gen 1 Pokemon. I, I don't... I do not subscribe to the fake notion, though, that later Pokemon designs suck. It's not the designs that are bad. Um, for instance, I think Black and White had great Pokemon designs. Can you tell me Haxorus is a bad Pokemon? 
even though it had the worst starter trio, if I'm being honest. Can you have kids in this game? No, thank God. Can you imagine? But you can tame wolves. My other save file of this game has a... Uh, oh, I'm getting my ass kicked. This is what I told you about the boars. This guy's about to come for me. Look at him. Oh god. No, no, no. Get out of here, buddy. Wouldn't Kingler technically be the ultimate Pokemon? Um... I... Mmm... I actually like Krabby better. I think the reason I like Krabby better, though, is when I was a youngster, the, uh... I, I would catch a lot of the Pokemon anime when it would come on for kids and stuff like that. And I had a bunch of them on... a bunch of the episodes on VHS tapes. And, uh... <laughs> I really liked Krabby's, like, anime sounds. If anyone in the chat remembers the show, Pokemon, uh, Krabby's anime sounds were like, which was just really funny to me. You've got all the other Pokemon that pretty much say their name, and then you've got Krabby that's just, like, gargling mouthwash. <laughs> it's a really funny concept. Gen 5 is peak. It's all downhill from there. Gen 5's pretty awesome. I, I will say my... The ultimate Pokemon game, in my opinion, uh, is Gold and Silver, followed by Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and then Black and White. I like them too. Wait, Krabby Patties made of Krabby? I think the I think the canon in SpongeBob is that Krabby Patties are made of plankton. Yeah. Now we know if Erica was a Pokemon NPC, she'd be a youngster. Yeah, youngster Joey. That's my uh, that's my Pokesona. <laughs> Hablando con Mo. Hi, Erica. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing quite well. Playing Valheim. Getting my ass kicked, as usual. Um, trying to figure out how to get out of my own house. Because I made a bad home. <laughs> my house sucks. We're trying, people. We're trying to fix the house. I like the Organical anime and X and Y the best. I never caught any of the anime past the Indigo League, I believe it's called put our torch on here um so you know call me is armaldo based on gigan armaldo's pretty sick yeah it's erica with the k micro raptor armaldo's pretty awesome although i will say i uh i nuzlocked emerald once and uh i had an armaldo on my team and i painstakingly trained it up after i had a pretty horrific death on my team and uh after i trained armaldo to like peak peak perfection. I found out that uh, they're just kind of shitty honestly in game. They're not very good at fighting. <laughs> Favorite D&D &D campaign setting? Any addition? I'm in a D&D &D mood lately. Hmm. I don't know. I My group used to do a lot of homebrew stuff. We, we used 5e because that's just what was out when we started playing. Uh, I'm kind of a late D&D &D addition. So, I guess I would say 5e. Favorite JoJo's Bizarre Adventure character? Oh, dude. Dude, I'm Joseph Joestar all the way. <laughs> you were gonna say, Joseph Joestar, that's my favorite too. Landscape is the best. Personally, I prefer the Digimon anime over the Pokemon one. Yeah, I had some of the Digimon on, uh... I had some of the Digimon anime on VHS tape. But honestly, I think it was just a lot harder to find. Uh, because Digimon are, like, I think they're less cute than Pokemon are. They're less easy to market. 5e is a good addition to start with. Yeah, true. Yar Yar Days, yeah. Alright, we gotta clear this place out. This is extreme, extreme makeover. Would you ever do, Fernando, I, Nuzlocking is the only way I play Pokemon game anymore. I play, uh... I play Nuzlocke like it's my business. And no, I'm not good at them. <laughs> I know my limits. I had a recent Emerald Nuzlocke where I, uh... I lost my starter <laughs> pretty early on. And, um... Damn it. My axe broke. We're gonna have to go repair this axe. But I did make it through the end of the Nuzlocke. I'm trying to remember what my team was at the end of that Emerald Nuzlocke. I think it was, let's see, out of Flygon, I had a Swalot, I had a Walrein, I had, where 
else did I have? I think I had an Aggron. I had a pretty good team, all things said and done. And I found out I really like Swalot, actually. Uh, I think it's- I used to think it was pretty ugly, uh, and it still is really ugly. But the good news is, the uglier the Pokémon, the more I like it. <laughs> Except for, like, Jinx and Mr. Mime. I don't really like the human-y looking ones, unless they're going, like, monkey style, you know? Tui had a lot of dumb, but yeah. After... No, Jesse, this is, uh, this is the epitome of compelling gameplay. This is not meant to be, uh, action-packed. I was only doing this in the first place to make sure that I could stream, <laughs> so that I could figure it out. Um, but then I'm like, hey, why not? Oh, Ocean is here! Hello, Ocean! Yeah, we're- we're prepping Ocean for, uh, Ancestors A Humankind Odyssey later this week. This is my best efforts on streaming. I'm a very, very epic gamer, very compelling streamer. Uh, just- it's just talent all around. <laughs> Water steel types go burr. Yeah, true TD. Viking Lumberjack Simulator. That's pretty much what this game is. I'll tell you that right now. Um, Valheim is amazing, and it's really fun to play alone or with friends. But it's also, like, at the beginning, if you're just gonna, if you're about to go off into the middle of nowhere and go into, like, the dark forest and get your ass kicked by a bunch of gray dwarves, like, you're, you're just gonna have a bad time. It becomes a very frustrating game very quickly if you're not prepared. Oh, no, <laughs> Jesse, I wasn't taking it personally. I was, I was, uh, concurring. Concurring with your points. We're just trying to come up with a good homestead right now before we, like, delve into the game. You should cobot this play with a- I'm trying to. I've already tried to get the other- the- the science friends, the science team together. But, you know. No one wants to play with me, I guess. I'm just- you know. I don't know how they'd keep up. I'm so good at it. <laughs> yeah, Ocean. Take it personally. See if I care. There's water and ice types, but no steam type. Yeah, I don't know. Do you play any strategy games? Ooh, Ocean, you should play the game. It's pretty fun. I, um... I've had some real bad times in this game, though. I, I scared... I scared my fiancé the other day. He walked in to see how I was doing. And I was in the process of, like, trying to get my ship back because a sea serpent destroyed it. Uh, and all my... This game is similar to Minecraft, whereas when you die, all your stuff is in the, in the spot where you died. So you have to kind of go retrieve your body, so to speak. Anyways, all my stuff was in the middle of the ocean, and this game is not kind to you if that happens. So I just had to keep making rafts, sailing out into the middle of nowhere, getting my ass kicked by a sea serpent, and then having to try it all over again. Yeah, true, Jesse. It, actually, the game that we'll be playing later this week, Ancestors, is very unforgiving as far as telling you how to play the game. Which is why I played it a little before actually streaming it. There's a crazy little community of Valheim players on my Discord. I definitely play too, lol. Oh damn, yeah. I don't know why I even said that. You, I, I knew you played this game. Well, don't make fun of me there, Ocean, because I'm not that good at it yet. And I've only been playing for like uh, 300 hours or something. My, uh, I swear to God, you guys, my other, uh, my other file on this game is I'm quite impressive. Maybe I'll show everybody if I'm feeling generous and insecure enough. <laughs> Build a bed and sleep in it. Yep, true. Monkey Dark Souls. Imagine. God, I just can't. That's that's pretty much Ancestors, actually. Uh, <laughs> Ancestors is just Monkey Dark Souls. <laughs> Getting killed by a Smilodon every six seconds. Um, falling and dying from ma trying to make a jump in a tree and then falling down. Ancestors is a really fun time. Uh, if you like unfun times. Which is why we're going to be playing it. I'm very excited. Only <laughs> Yeah, I know, dude. I'm such a... I'm a noob. Real noob territory. <sighs> okay. Alright. I'm really not liking that there's dirt on my floor. But this is going to be our... This is going to be our new current base. This is home sweet home. Ooh. I have enough stuff for a Garbo raft that you might as well not even... 
Ocean, have you had any bad rafting experiences? My worst experience in this game had to do with rafts. And not including the sea serpent incident. Burn everything. Yeah. If only I had money. Angry monkey sounds. I know that struggle. Okay. We're not going for glamour here, people. <laughs> We're going for... We're going for function. Function over four. I just got a Lunchable. You know, I made a stew this week that was... What is it the kids say? Poggers. <laughs> I got great feedback on that one. We're gonna put floors on the roof. No, you know what? That always goes poorly for me. I used to like rafts and Ark, and then lead sick thieves became a thing, and those guys are dead. Dude, I can't even imagine Ark. I looked at Ark, and I was like, I don't know that I've got the... I don't know that I have the patience in the sense that I wouldn't get too angry playing Ark. Because this game already pisses me off a lot, and I love it, and it still makes me really mad. I like it, Grishy. Creationists ask, why is there a monkey, and never ask, how is monkey? Yeah... I had, um, <laughs> I made the enormous mistake of commenting on one of our universally beloved in this community um, friends, John Maddox's posts, because he made a dumbass post like he does very frequently. And uh, I commented on it because I was like, God, this is just, it's a level of, it, it has to be corrected. It simply must be, you know. So I commented on it. And uh, someone else in the YEC community very graciously told me uh, that I'm not an ape just because I want to be an ape. No matter how much I like them, I will never be one. And I had to explain to this individual, it it's not about what, <laughs> it's not about what I want, <laughs> my friend. Like, it's what is or what isn't. You know, like this is just the nature of things. Like, he was like, "Well, give me some evidence." I was like, "I mean, like you're an ape in the same way that a, a dog is a canid." What do you mean, give you some evidence? So I laid it out in like a nice, in a nice post where I was like, okay, here's, here's the logic. Keep in mind, like a creationist came up with this. This is Linnaeus is doing, taxonomy was. Uh, and then they told me agree to disagree after I made a painstakingly long post. And I sat there looking at it and I was like, you know, I don't know what I expected. <laughs> Careful, he's probably watching. Yeah, and he probably is. Probably is watching. I like to think that a lot- I already saw SFT in the side chat once, so, you know. He was here and was being nice. Like, he wasn't just rude to me the other day. And I was kind of like, hmm. So SFT, if you're still here, that's why we're not chatting. Don't make me p- <laughs> It seems like we figured out pretty quickly that we're primates. Were there other ideas about what group we might belong to when the theory was still new? Yeah, the thing is, is that there's- so I go over this a lot because I think that it's a really great point. Back when Linnaeus was still trying to figure out how to categorize things and animals in general, he um, he sat down with a bunch of skeletons of primates. Uh, specifically, I think he was looking at a gibbon and an orang. And uh, he looks at these skeletons and he's like, there's a famous quote, and I usually use it in presentations or in debates because I think it's a poignant. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but the paraphrased version is like, I can think of no reason why we should separate man from simian or simian from man, uh, but should I not separate them? I should bring the whole of theologians down upon my head. Uh, maybe I ought to by virtue of the discipline. So he's basically like, look, I can't classify humans as, as apes because they're going to get really pissed. They meaning the, uh, the theologians, and he was like, even though I, I can't think of a reason not to. Um, yeah, such is the nature of things, Jesse. Yeah, he was here. He was here earlier. Uh, you can you can go up there and see his comments. I have wood already. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, we we knew from the very beginning that we were indeed that we were indeed primates and apes, etc. Uh, people from other cultures knew this, too. Like, any culture that has apes, uh, or monkeys, like, within their, within their average encounters, kind of, usually have some kind of legend on how these, these primates were a result of a human doing something bad and being transformed into a primate. Uh, or humans doing something bad and being transformed from our native state 
uh, into humans where we must think and pay taxes and stuff like that. Wasn't there some point serious consideration humans were hylobatids? I don't know that it was actually put on the table, but there, if memory serves, there was some chatter at one point where people were like, it's really weird that there are these little bitty uh, monkey-ish looking guys, uh, and they sure do seem to be very similar to us in their overall stance and locomotion. They just have arms that are too long. Uh, so maybe we're a, an evolved form of them. But interestingly enough, the current proposition is that the ancestor of all of the uh, hominoids was probably very gibbon-like, um, at least in form, a suspensory adapted uh, little gibbo, which I like a lot. Medusa. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Walker, Medusa confirmed. Wait till you see me once I got my bow. I'm a fiend with this thing. Oh shit, I don't have any arrows. We gotta, we gotta do some repairs here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, dude. Medusa Snake confirmed. Have you ever thought of doing your reaction to a creationist movie, Popcorn Debunks? I really want to do Genesis Impact. Uh, answers, or not Answers in Genesis. Genesis Apologetics, the bastard sibling of Answers in Genesis, has a movie out called uh, <laughs> Genesis Impact. Uh, and it's, you know... It's very Michael Bay-ish in its, in its kind of presentation on the outside posters and stuff like that. I would love to do a Genesis Impact stream. The only thing is, is that I don't know if you guys have noticed this. You probably have. A lot of the arguments that creationists are bringing... Hey, oh, see you later, Ocean. Thank you for being here. Uh, and congrats on 20k! Ocean's got 20k, you guys. You should go subscribe to him. Uh... Damn, sometimes those knock each other over. Get the out of here, bud. Look at that. I was provoked, Walker. Anyways, I don't know if you've noticed this about creationist content, but there are a lot of arguments that are just... <laughs> this is gonna be shocking. Uh, recycled and passed around. Shit. I'm sorry. You guys, I try to present myself with better as a non-swearer. But I'm actually a big swear. Genesis Impact is my new porn name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Play it, you know, drinking game. Uh, is it Creationist Propaganda or a porn star name? Nostalgia Critic reviewing Michael Bay movies is always a treat. Are you being sarcastic there, TD? Because Nostalgia Critic makes my stomach hurt. GA is the sloppy. <laughs> True, Dapper. The first time I played this game... The first time I died was because a tree fell on me. So you gotta be real careful. These are the sleeper enemies of the game, or the trees. Oh boy. Anyways, yeah, a lot of the arguments are the same as what I'm saying. The point that I'm saying. If I had, to, if I have to refute one more time why Lucy is a biped, why Australopithecus afarensis, and indeed all the Australopithecines are bipeds, I'm just gonna like throw my body into oncoming traffic, killing myself instantly. It's, it, you know, I mean, the, the thing about it is, you know, I, I could rant forever on this kind of thing, hence the YouTube channel. The thing about it is that this stuff is not difficult to understand. It's not hard to understand things like basic biomechanics. Some of these people have PhDs and they can't seem to put two and two together. Okay, I'm still here, but the same thing happened to me. Ten minutes of, Yep. Yeah, I was like, sweet, I finally made an axe. Now I can finally get moving on the game. And then the tree fell on me, and, uh, Hugin was like, luckily you'll respawn. And I was like, but did you miss the part where I got killed by a tree? I did? All right. We're going stealth style at this boy. Did we get him? Got him. Skill improved, bows. We're gonna get this one, too. Sorry, my dude. Ruthless. That's a given. RJ set me onto that biped argument. The paper they cite is a minor advisor guarantee. He affirms bipedality. Yeah, the suspensory adaption one. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. But, like, the thing is... the 
the, the point that's missed here by creationists who cite that argument is that the biomechanics behind suspensory bipedalism, like clamoring, as in what we see in gorillas and orangutans, um, is similar in overall body form, but it's quite different when it comes to uh, joints, like ankles and knees and things like that. So we could certainly have evolved from a, from a bipedal clamorer, but by the time we reach the likes of Aurora and Tugenensis and onward, we're definitely dealing with something that was on the ground quite a bit, uh, even if it wasn't like a habitual biped in Artipithecus. Although, I don't know. I, I think that they're still pretty good. I can ADHD the hell out of this game. Dapper micro after true. Human equals pangolin. I mean, these are the same people who believe there's a global flood. So, it's it's not even that the, it's not even that there's not evidence that it happened, Jesse. It's that there's evidence to the contrary. Like at every single turn possible. The more I've talked to geologists in passing uh, and on the show, the more I've been like, there is an element of intentionality to the deceit going on here. 24 hour gaming stream? Nah. I don't even think I can stay up that late. What evidence do you think might be hidden below the Sahara Desert? Probably some absolutely gobsmackingly beautiful fossils. I would imagine. But wouldn't it be cool if it was like a UFO? <laughs> Decil Drace. A couple hours ago I left a mini essay on your false Oh, okay, that's a dapper. Cool. Favorite dinosaur? Uh, a kilobator. I really like theropods. Little feathered theropods. But I also like... I really do... really do like Pachycephalosaurus too. I like the this idea of a bunch of... Uh, <laughs> A bunch of dudes just kind of slamming their heads into each other because they're upset. Yeah, show me the soil between the layers. Sh yeah. Yeah. Nephilim free is a special kind of waste of time. There's a there's a really uh There's a really good reason why not too many people chat with him. Most of the Sahara is rock not sand. Most cave paintings are found there. Uh cave paintings are really interesting. Um, I almost did a bite-sized bust on cave paintings, but I didn't th I didn't feel that it would be long enough because the main point is rather succinct. You guys know how I like to be uh, super long-winded. Um, but it's really interesting because you'll get creationists who will be like, yeah, Neanderthals, they're definitely just degraded humans. And it may have taken a couple hundred years after the Ice Age or whatever, after the <laughs> Flood. For them to degrade but they definitely did degrade don't worry about it trust us but the thing is is that they require all animals to have diversified by the time the neanderthals had because we find the likes of specialized proboscideans a la mammoths and mastodons as well as woolly rhinos and all sorts of different um ungulates perissodactyl type animals right in their cave paintings in stunning detail there, you know, of course, the question being like, dude, you don't have, you don't have like 4,000 years to get these guys to diversify. Like, they have to diversify in a few hundred based off of what we find. Sweet. We found a treasure cache. No, I don't need a torch. Torches are for wieners. Yeah, you do need a lot of you do need a lot of water for a global flood. That is true. I I honestly think that that's the least of their problems. Coming after these boys. This has been fun. Catch you next science video. Yeah, I'll keep being a gamer. Don't worry about it. Thank you, Tim. Bye bye. This reminds me of Horizon Zero Dawn. I've actually not played Horizon Zero Dawn, but I've heard it's fun. We're just going around killing stuff until we can stumble across the, uh, the first boss's shrine to fight him. Let's see here. Hmm. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Yeah, Fernando. Yeah, they really do think that. I don't know. I, I, Christians have a really low view of humanity. Um... And, like, humans suck in a lot of ways, but 
At least we're not genetically degrading. <laughs> that's a that's a perk, I would say. Oh, it's getting a sequel? Dope. Oh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. We gotta get the out of here. We're right at the border of a dark forest. I will 100% be one shot by that skeleton. IQ, the speed of light is a strong argument. It's not that it, it's not even a strong argument, it's it's definitive. You know, like that's that's the problem with so many of these of these YECs here on online. And the professionals too. You know, they go around and like try to come up with these absolutely bonkers explanations for physics. <laughs> like Yeah, uh yeah, the speed of light is not kind to creationists. That's true. That's true, Goose. That's true. There is an element of fear-mongering in there. There is definitely an element of fear-mongering in there. Just a sec. I can't believe 47 people are watching this. Thank you for being here, you guys. I'm glad you're here with me to hang out. Do so you see that over there? By the way, that hut? Those dudes around that, those are gray dwarves. And I can one-shot them in my other file, and they will one-shot me right now, because I'm walking around with a club in rags. And I'm just not about to get in on that. Okay, I think I'm back. I hope I'm back. Well... I guess we'll find out soon. Gotta get to relative safety before I can actually mess around with this. Because this game will just destroy you. Okay, hold on. We'll log out real quick. Let's see if we can't fix the problem. Okay, it looks like we're fixed. Yeah, okay, sweet. Sweet, and I already exited the game. <laughs> I exited the game because I panicked. This is why we do these kinds of things, so that if this happens next time, we'll be okay. Microraptor, my least favorite dinosaur is Kentoven. Same. Same, same, same. Yeah, buffering is lame. At least you didn't don't have dial up like Dan Biddle. You can't outriddle the Biddle, baby. Dan Biddle. I, I can't imagine seeing that something like AIG exists and being like, you know what we need? Another one of these. And then making Genesis Apologetics. Like, it's... <laughs> talk about no dem something no one had any demand for. You're giving Kent too much credit. True. Typical evolutionist buffering. Yeah, dude. What what is it Kent says? Maybe maybe my computer will evolve uh, a better processor. <laughs> I love I love that. Every um every time a creationist compares evolution to cars, someone else becomes an agnostic. <laughs> like someone else leaves the uh I guess I should say leaves the evangelicals cuz there are some totally dope uh Christian folks out there who are scientists and chill. Even calling Hoven to dinosaurs an insult to dinosaurs. Yeah, true. That is true. That's a gibbon. Best monkey that isn't an ape. Oh, that is a great question. What is my favorite non-ape monkey? There are a lot of really good monkeys out there. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. We found the, uh... Is this it? Is this the shrine? Was it really this close? Did I just walk around the whole map only to find the thing was five seconds away? Okay. Really cool. This is the route we took. Awesome. I love that. Alright, so I'm gonna have to sacrifice... Probably... More than one deer trophy. So we gotta go hunt some deer before we can fight the boss here. Oh, man. Okay. Let me think. Favorite... Favorite monkey that is not an ape. There are so many good ones. 
I think I'm just going to talk about some of my favorites because I don't know that I could pick a single, a single favorite. My favorite prosimian is probably, probably the black and white rough lemur. My favorite platyrine is a tie between the cotton top tamarin and probably the northern mariki, sometimes called the woolly spider monkey. Bracketiles hypoxanthus. I do like howlers too. I do like alawada. Those guys are pretty cute. I really like um, pygmy marmosets as well. It's all good, really and truly. They're they're all pretty cute. And then my favorite of the Circopithecoids, so the non-ape old world monkeys, probably Colobuscoriza, which is colloquially called the black and white colobus. They've got these, or man, uh, mantled colobus. They've got these beautiful, beautiful plumage, uh, or blue, beautiful collage comes down their backs like a waterfall. Um, I also like langurs. I really like a lot of the Semnopithecus guys, the, uh, the gray langurs. I just think they're kind of cute and weird. Macaques always have a close place in my heart. Uh, I love Barbary macaques. I think they're adorable. I re I, honestly, it'd probably just be easier to tell you the monkeys I don't like, because <laughs> I like so many of them. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't love baboons. I really am kind of scared of most baboons. The, my least favorite baboon is probably the Hamadryas baboon, just because they're they're kind of assholes more so than your typical baboon fair assholes. And I'm not a big, I'm really not a big fan of manga bees either. I don't really have a reason for not liking them. I just don't really like them that much. These aren't that cute, comparatively. There are a lot of really cute Gwinnins. There are a lot of really, really cute Gwinnins. Gigantopithecus is the best ape. Gigantopithecus is awesome, but even in prehistoric apes, I think my favorite is Afropithecus. They had these big honking canine teeth, and they just used them to open fruits. Like, big can opener. Big can opener boys. 5 a.m. in the NL. Okay, see you later, Goose. Thank you for being here. If evolution is true, why are there still monkeys? <sighs> I mean, yeah. Good point. Let's pack it up, boys. <laughs> Let's pack it up. <laughs> Vervet monkeys are also very cute. Vervet monkeys are weird uh, because they've got blue genitals. It makes it very easy to tell the difference between the males and females, which is awesome if you're trying to do field work on them. Because, like, sexing the monkeys when they're out doing monkey stuff is not very easy, because they tend to just do whatever they want and not make it easy to, uh, tell who is who. Especially when you get to the monomorphic species that they just don't, like, males aren't even bigger than females. Willow in Brooklyn House, is that a serious question? No, <laughs> it's not a serious question. <laughs> yeah, Dapper. Gigantopithecus, gorillas, and orangutans. The three apes, according to Nephilim Free. Local genius, Nephilim Free. There's, yeah, there, there was no way. My arching is too bad right now. Yeah, that was never going over there. Damn. We're doing it the old-fashioned way, boys. Have you played Ancestors? That's what we're prepping for today. Actually, Joshua, we're prepping to play Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey this week. That's why we did this stream. Because I'm getting ready to play it. All the way through. Beginning to end, we're 100%ing it. 46 watching and 48 likes, well done. I'm just glad people came, honestly. I had no idea people were coming. Favorite bird, barn owl. I love owls. Someone said Nephilim free, and I came running. Yeah, Titan, we really like dunking on Nephi over here, although it really is punching down. Um, I feel very comfortable being mean about Nephilim free because he's an unpleasant person. That's kind of my rule as an individual for dealing with people. I, I get a lot of folks who are like, you're really polite, and it's like, I I'm no more polite than, sh than I should be. To people because I think cordiality is 
lost on the lost art on the internet and it makes it a lot easier to communicate with people when they feel respected and when you feel respected and it's an open dialogue that's fun even if you disagree but the second someone starts acting like a jackass at least to me is the second that i'm kind of like you know i don't have to be nice about this neither does anybody else there's nothing, there's nothing worse than seeing someone on Modern Day Debate be nice and get abused by the other person. You know, or any debate channel. Aaron Judge, favorite game? Man, there was a time, there was a time when I would have been really basic and then said, like, Skyrim or something. Because there's, I'm, I'm a sucker for sandbox games. Open world kind of sandboxy games. But, um... I actually think Breath of the Wild is my favorite game. I, Breath of the Wild evoked childlike wonder. And we're not going in the dark forest. For the ref, for reference, guys, once you start seeing pine trees, it's time to go the opposite direction because we are not prepared to go into the dark forest. We're just not. We'll get our. We will get ganked in the black forest. Not by these dudes. I'm telling you, the freaking borders, they come out of nowhere. <laughs> Screeches really loudly and approaches. It snuck up on me, I swear. It was self-defense. Tomorrow on MDD, T-Jump and Surus will explain slavery to Praise I Am and Jesus is Lord. Yeah, let's talk about Praise I Am and Jesus is Lord really fast. Because I had a praise stream pop up on my uh, suggested the other day. And, um, I'm actually, yeah, Joshua, I'm actually planning on doing Far Cry Primal on this channel, too, if people actually like the video game thing. But I think I'm going to do another channel for it, because I don't want to clog the science with the, uh, with the fun messing around, uh, and gamer, epic gamer playthroughs. But we need to kill this deer, because we do not have enough pelts to summon the Lord of the Forest. Got him. Her. Anyways, as I was saying, yeah, Jesus' is Lord and Praise had a stream the other day that Praise had a stream that Jesus' is Lord was a part of. Uh, and it popped up on my recommended. And it was titled, uh, Does the Bible Allow for Female Pastors? And I thought, this could only be a good take. There is no way that this is going to be anything but wholly kind, appropriate, uh, correct and progressive it was not those things as i'm sure you will be shocked to learn you need to pedal me some cry erica yeah at some point we're doing far cry primal but we we've got to work our way through the evolution first really we should be doing spore <laughs> before anything else oh no oh i left the meat on now we've got coal my rabbi is female. Yeah, um... The conclusion was women get in your place. Yeah, that was the conclusion. Surprisingly, praise I am that I am and Gavin, who is also in the Young Earth Creationist circles and pops up from time to time, was, um... They were both like, yeah, women can be pastors. Why would they not be able to be pastors? And then Jamie Russell, a Young Earth Creationist who pops up every now and again too, was also like, yes... Why would women not be allowed to be pastors? But our good friend, logical, plausible, probable, standing for truth, and some of the other usual suspects in the Young Earth Creationist community were not of the opinion that women can be pastors, uh, and were of the opinion that there's a reason the patriarchy exists, and it's definitely a good thing. Never mind the fact that the patriarchy, quote unquote, is just not something that has been culturally consistent for every culture through time. And when it has been, its strength has also come and gone. So, you know, women, for instance, in ancient Egypt, which would have, I guess you could say, earlier, middle, or late, oh, any of ancient Egypt other than the intermediate periods, would have been considered a patriarchal culture, but unlike medieval Europe, women could get divorces and they could own property and have jobs and do all sorts of cool stuff like that so you know i was just kind of like damn it's really awesome to hear that 
The science is regressive, and so are the social positions. Um, Mark Schipple, my dad's church has a lesbian pastor. They would love that. <laughs> yeah, they probably would. They would probably have a very good reaction to that. Yeah, Mr. Well, that's because they weren't Christian, Erica. True. Yeah. True and based. <laughs> uh, I don't get it, you guys, you know? I I can't get behind it. I don't I don't understand the logic behind taking like the logic even exegetically, right? Like I'm not even I wouldn't even go so far as to say that I'm like well versed in the Bible or anything like that. But I know enough about it to be like when Paul is saying for women to be quiet in church and shit like that, he's sending a letter to Corinth where things were unruly and unwieldy, and there's a pretty heavy consensus among biblical scholars that this was context-specific. So, like, imagine having a religion and not knowing your own text within its own context. John Walton famously said, Understanding and translating a language is hard enough. But translating a culture is damn near impossible. Mr. Wilford, if they don't keep women down, Pastor Mike is going to get too much action. <laughs> yeah, true. Micro Raptor, a trans pastor, that would break their minds. Yeah. Well, you know, since trans men are men, they should be able to be pastors. You know? Even under that lens. Trans rights people, that's what we're here for. I personally don't think anyone should be a pastor, but if men are allowed to be pastors, then all other genders should be allowed to be pastors. You would- I was kind of floored by how much bickering goes on. Like, there are a trillion denominations. I knew it happened at the big scale, right? But, at the same time, it's like, I don't- <laughs> Why are we having these arguments? You know what I mean? Like, don't- don't we have bigger fish to fry than arguing about- the interpretation of a pastor or of a passage in a language that is effectively dead and then claiming that only you have the correct interpretation and cultural interpretation it's just kind of silly Eric if you're taller says he changed my mind on Genesis yeah I think he's a cool biblical scholar like whether you're religious or not no that's the standard response on Paul's take on women Cross Borg and Ermin discuss your concerns and results for you turn out positive. Cool. Dope. Just found out. <laughs> Jesus' is Lord found out I was non binary, called me a beta cuck, and blocked me on YouTube. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing more masculine than calling someone a beta cuck or like a soy boy. Nothing more masculine than that. Yeah, being an egalitarian is cool. I mean, I, I, I wear the feminist label um, in its original context, certainly. I think there's problems with the current movement. I, I don't like the misandry going on in some places. Um, because I, I agree with you. I think that if you've got someone up for a job, it's, it's equal, um, equal opportunity for those jobs. Not necessarily... I don't know that we can get anywhere as a society if we're instituting um, like, I don't like the idea that you have to have a certain amount of women in a certain job. I, I feel like that's patronizing. To me, it would be patronizing. Although I do understand that there's merit in places where women can't get a foot in the door. I can, I can certainly see merit in that. But I, I, I almost think instead, like, I think quotas make everybody resentful. Like, why not instead just make, make a, come up with some incentive rather than a quota? I don't know, maybe those are the same thing. There's a reason I don't do this. <laughs> There's a reason I'm not, like, a policy maker. That's a Gibbon made. God made Eve out of Adam's rib, so she was cloned and gender trans. True. Based Eve. Mother of us all. Is the soy boys of the Are the soy boys of the apocalypse still a thing? I don't know. Ask... Ask the resident alphas of YouTube. Probably. I would imagine so. I mean, you have to understand, these are people that don't... These are people that will look at soy, look at the chemical composition, and be like, holy shit, there's phytoestrogen in it. I guess it's a femifier, right? <laughs> no one no one touch it. It's gonna take away your, it's gonna emasculate you or some dumbness like that. It, there's just, 
head empty, no thoughts on a lot of this stuff. Are you implying beta cucks can destroy the world? Ah, yes. The paradox. Um, the paradox for the uh, evangelical, hardcore evangelical, usually conservative, although not always, is uh, the enemy is both impeccably, unstoppably powerful and also a soy boy beta cuck that can't get laid and sucks and is an idiot. The ultimate paradox. Out of all Genesis inter interpretations of Genesis, Walton's temple inauguration interpretation holds the most water. Yeah, I think so too. Forced... <laughs> True, Mr. Wilford. Forced neoconservative femboy camps. Make it happen, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, the... <laughs> The, uh, the figurehead of the left, Joe Biden, centrist, and and also uh, our our fearless leader on the left. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm not very good with the politics, but I I think that uh, I think I sure do think that there's a weird connection between like evangelicals and science denial. Like, stumble across any of these Young Earth Creationist channels, and you're probably going to find a statistically significant portion of anti-vax going on. When people say cuck, I don't think that they know what it means. True, Tubian. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. Very few people actually use it properly. Sorry, Dessel. Sorry about the politics. It is, it's, it's a stream of thought thing. Gargamel Gold, hello taking a break from the creationist power just to beat wild animals and up as your cave woman alter ego. Yeah, pretty much. We're gonna miss it though. Please? Maybe? The deer are so loud in this game though. Anti-malarkey, yeah. Yeah, I saw that, Willow. Yeah, I thought that was a... I thought that was a weird deal. Yeah, sorry there, Dapper. I was... I didn't mean Greek. I meant, like, Quinye Greek, I guess. He talks about his ex as now his roommate. No problem, Dessel. Have fun. Yeah, no worries, folks. This is not going to be a gaming channel. This is this is a prep stream for ancestors. I am under no illusion that the people subscribed to me are subscribed for the purposes of uh, my super epic, my super epic gamer moves. But if it's you know. I don't know, like, if, if this is something that people find fun or enjoyable. I mean, I find it fun to talk to you guys while I'm screwing around on Valheim or other games. <laughs> Messing up and not being good at gaming. I'd probably just make another channel for it, though. <laughs> True Titan, yeah. Yeah. How can someone be ex-gay? Yeah, I don't know. Great question. Dude, really? Fernando, is that true? The real question is when sci- Oh, wait, not that one. Sorry, TD. I will read that one, too, but... The creationist channel God Rules says the new Godzilla vs. Kong movie is propaganda to promote the Nephilim. Yeah, you know, sometimes... Sometimes it blows my mind the hot takes that come out of the of the Young Earth creationists with regard to hating random acts of media. Like who who here as a youngster remembers the backlash for like Pokemon because it had the word evolution in it or that's so raven because of the psychic stuff or I don't know what else did they hate? Harry Potter, that's a classic. You're planning on reviewing this game and looking at it from Oh, Gargamel Gold. No, this is this is mostly a for fun stream, because I was kinda bored, and I wanted to make sure that I knew how to stream for a game that's later I'm going to play later this week. 
called Ancestors the Humankind Odyssey, uh, which attempts to kind of track human evolution from a an arboreal quadruped style Miocene ape, probably something along the lines of Salanthropus chidensis or earlier, um, to around Australopithecus afarensis. It's pretty fun from what I've played of it. I haven't played that much of it because I'm not very good at it. But it should be good. It should be interesting. And that we are going to review for from a, an anthropological perspective. Okay, dude. Seriously? My neighbor's <laughs> Hannah Montana because Miley's dude friend would go into the girl's bathroom to talk to her. <laughs> That's so specific. You would think people who worship an allegedly all-powerful god wouldn't be threatened by so many things. Yeah, I... It's just... It's such a weird hill to die on. Uh, young Earth creationists have a really love-hate relationship. Complicated relationship with Jurassic Park. They love how the dinosaurs aren't depicted as... Um, as feathered. They love that. It's like their favorite thing about it. But yeah, they don't like the... Uh, they, if you mean evolution is a swear in some... Some creationist groups. Faux show. Taco, he might have heard a girl fart. Yeah. Girls don't fart. Don't be ridiculous. Anyone remember that old gem? Enjoyed the surprise stream, but it's a school night, literal. Yeah, sorry guys. Again, no no obligations to be here, although I do appreciate your presence. As a Gen Xer, I grew up in the satanic panic. Holy moly, who's your buddy? I bet you did. How did you even play Dungeons and Dragons? I can't even imagine. The satanic panic is really weird, too. Um, so a side interest of mine is true crime. And there's a lot of really interesting connections with the satanic panic. It was a really, really bad time to be someone interested in, like, rock and roll or metal <laughs> because if you wore anything black you were you know a part of the satanic panic all of that stuff was bad you didn't want to get involved okay we're about to get one shotted good lord i need to stop walking by that mausoleum eric asks did i play sonic i was never a big sonic fan the first jurassic park was made yeah agreed rodent no last name true true yeah no Absolutely no shade on the Jurassic Park dudes creators for leaving out feathered dinos at all. I already used this one. Shoot. I'm only 19 and remember I church telling Pokemon is satanic because the lightning symbolism. <laughs> uh fellas, is it satanic to uh to like things with a lightning symbol? Golly. Some of this stuff is hard to get into the mindset for, for sure. Let alone the fact that it had been expensive, yeah. During the Satanic Panic, I don't think that I'd remember any of it. Some documentaries. Oh, huh, nice. Yeah, there you go, wrote no last name. Stick it to the man. I don't think we're gonna find any more deer out here. Oh, I hear them. They're around here somewhere. There's one right there. This is our big opportunity. Nailed it. Sweet. Dustin Furnace gaming now. Not permanently, Dustin, don't worry. A lot of folks are very concerned with the idea that this is going to be an epic gaming channel from now on. It is not going to be a gaming channel. I don't even think I have the stamina to game that much. What happened to your roof? Oh, that wasn't my house, Willow. My ho my cool and epic house is over here. This is only a, a brief intermission and a brief interlude into hanging out and doing based gaming things. Because I want to review Ancestors. Which is a human evolution relevant game. That is pretty fun. I forgot you could kick in this game. Get out of town! <laughs> Okay, let's fix some of our stuff. It is expensive to do feathers. Yeah, it's a lot easier to just slap some textured silicon on stuff. 
Hominid Evolution chat, creationist bashing, and a beautiful video game. Extraordinarily relaxing. Thank you, Dirksen. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm glad you guys are uh, hanging out with me here. We're about to cook some, uh, what is that, meat? You can also cook these necktails. Women spoke without permission. No, God, no. No way, Microraptor. No can do. Yeah, I don't, I'm not even in my room. I'm sitting in my living room because my study where I do all of the recording and stuff like that is, it's not very well, like, insulated, I guess. It gets cold at night and it's hot during the day. And I've got bad circulation. <laughs> An old woman. So I gotta go, I gotta stick to the comfy, sit in the comfy chair. Yeah, Spore is so fun, actually, Gargamel Gold, but I find that a lot of my enjoyment from Spore I can get from just playing with the creature creator instead of playing it all up through all of the evolutionary kind of steps. All right, dude, we're about to box this guy. Get them out of here. She's also missing the wall of Funko Pops. Yeah, all my cool merch is in the other room. All my, uh, paleo merch. But I am sitting next to three dogs. Keep farting. Which is just great. Someone did recreated humans in Spore, by the way, multiple times. Huh. Bet they did. There's more to Spore than the creature creator? I never noticed. Yeah, same. The creature creator is some of the most fun ever. It's very fun to mess around with. <laughs> so you use evolution to intelligently design creatures? Oh, oh no no. <laughs> He's on to us. <laughs> oh yeah, gaming stream. Hey, Canton. Yeah, we're doing a gaming stream right now. This is, again, to prepare for later this week. When we're playing Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey. And it's not an easy game. <laughs> it's a very frustrating game at times. Not this one. This is very relaxing. Eric Beertoller, what, what initiated your interest in primates? I've talked a little bit about that before. I've always been interested in human evolution, but primates in particular, like as an order, like the entire order of primates, I wasn't interested in them specifically like over bioanth until i went to tanzania and saw them um, i had the pleasure of seeing a bunch of different species there we're back at the black forest again when will i learn anyways while we were there we got the pleasure of going to gombe stream national park and i got to see some really really incredible uh chimps we got to see the Alpha, the Alpha of the troop, of the G group. And Frodo had just been ousted as the Alpha when we were there. So it was, things were a bit, things were a bit tumultuous, but we did get to see the Alpha male, and we also saw a bunch of foraging females uh, on a separate day, who we followed for the entirety of the day. Got to watch them forage, nest build, got way too close to one of them and got yelled at by them, by the chimps. <laughs> Uh, and there were also a ton of, I believe there were Chakma baboons at the camp. But they could, I, I think they could have been all of baboons. I believe both are pretty rampant in Tanzania. Anyways, they stole some of my laundry off of the laundry line. And I had, I got the absolute treat of chasing them. It was just a couple of juveniles, so I wasn't like scared or anything, but... Frodo was the alpha? Did he have the ring? <laughs> Frodo was one of the meanest alphas of Jane Goodall's group. He really was. He was a jerk. No one was really sad when Frodo kind of kicked the bucket. Least of all his, uh, his trope. The best olive baboons are the Kalamata olive baboons. Yeah, those are the cutest ones. Those ones are really kinda baboons. I believe there are subspecies of Cyanocephalus, maybe? Venerable B, did he have a friend named Samwise? Frodo the, uh, Frodo the Chimp was much more like Gollum 
than any of the heroes. Gombe Stream National Park had a few incidences with, with Frodo. With him being pretty, uh, pretty rough. Solrak CAP, late to the stream. What's the game? We're playing Valheim, but this isn't going to be a cool and epic gaming channel. I feel the need to reassure everyone. We're just playing this to prep for Ancestors later this week. The graphics are absolutely gorgeous. You know, I actually think so too. It's low poly, but the lighting is really nice. Just want to let you know, Erica, your channel is essentially fun. Really, Canton? That is so sweet, and I'm genuinely so pleased to hear that. It's stuff like that, genuinely, that makes it worth it. Dirksen, I've always wanted to make a video game about Neanderthals and Sapiens interacting in early Europe. Yeah, that would be dope. What do you think about the study teaching chips to cook? From Rodent, no last name. Yeah? That's an interesting one. I, I think... Yeah, I think that the issue with that is going to be the selection for effective tool use, for cognition and effective tool use, is tailored for environments. There is no need for chimpanzees in their environment to be capable of cooking uh, or, or to use or communicate, use tools or communicate necessarily the way that humans do. We're in danger of anthropomorphizing them too much sometimes when we try to get them to be like us. Um, because we're different primates. I mean, it, it's kind of interesting that we we ask, why, why aren't chimpanzees, you know, speaking like we speak? Why don't they communicate in the ways that we communicate? Why do they use gestures more than vocalizations? <laughs> Which is kind of interesting, because we don't ask that question about, like, chimps and gorillas. You know, we don't ask why they aren't acting like gorillas or orangs. We, we accept that those apes are different because they adapted for different environments. What I want is a gaming stream with me and a chimp. Dude, <laughs> I, I have a complicated relationship with being near primates, other primates, because I love them, and I always end up getting outsmarted by them when I interact with them. Every time. Every time they outsmart me. Had a juice box stolen by a vervet monkey in Tirangiri National Park. I had my hat stolen by a gibbon. This one's a captive gibbon. Uh, in Sakura, or not Sakura, in Nakhurnarshasima Zoo in Thailand. I have been scared away from place. I've been supplanted by chimpanzees and by baboons and by macaques. I'm always getting dunked on by other primates. Haven't some chimpanzees managed to play Pac-Man relatively well? I don't know. That's an interesting question. I do know that they are superb at short-term memory. They blow us out of the water at short-term memory. Which makes sense. They rely more on short-term memory and we don't. A gibbon stole your hat? Betrayal. Tell me about it. Yeah, thought we were having a moment. And, uh, she duped me. Totally duped me. What a fool I was. Get a chimp that is a stuffed children's take. <laughs> Shouldn't be an issue. Losing a game of chess against a chimp. I probably would lose a game of chess against a chimp. I'm not very good at chess. Okay. We still only have two deer trophy, because they aren't spawning near my house. I guess let's try going... We'll go over here. That's what you get for having a stylish one while the gibbon does not have one. Yeah, she wasn't super happy with me. <laughs> right after she, um... Right after she snatched it, right off the top of my head, a, a younger male came up and stuck his hand through the bar, because I was I was up close and personal with them at a uh, at a zoo, in this case. And the male grabbed the strap of my camera around my neck, and I totally panicked. I was like, just take it. I don't want no trouble. It's possible for a chimp to be better at COD than anybody else. Yeah, they do. Oh, man. There's one right there. Oh, wait, there's one. No, get away. They're not as important. 
Okay, good. Now we can take care of the doofus. Get out of here, boy. Okay. That's awesome to hear, Canton. Very awesome to hear. Please. Yes. Okay, we got a trophy. Again, I think it takes three. I think it takes five trophies, actually. We might be able to get another one from this lady over here. All right, we're aiming high. Jackpot. Very basic cooking skills. Yeah, I think that was Kanzi. If memory... Again, if memory serves, it was Kanzi. I think I've seen the video of them teaching him how to roast a marshmallow. Would Dr. Zayas be considered a monkey creationist? Yes, as would uh, Dr. Banjo from Futurama. One of these days, a bored Kent Hovind is going to feature me on Whack an Atheist. Yeah, so, funny story. I thought it was two trophies. Is it two trophies? Is it two trophies? Are you serious? Well then let's go craft our armor and test it out. And then we'll fight the deer god. Let's go try it. Boy! Forgot that you take fall damage in this game. Anyways, what I was going to say was the funny story about that is that uh <laughs> Kent Hovind recently received a gift in the mail called the Toolbox of Evolution or something like that. It was sent by a creationist fan. And, um, one of the gifts in this Toolbox for Evolution, Toolbox for Evolutionists or whatever, was a hat with a bunch of, I guess, pins? Buttons? You might say? And, um, they were all, all of the pins were of YouTube atheists and YouTube science proponents, I guess, that Kent had debated. And lo and behold, Atheist Jr. brought this to my attention. I am on that hat, which is one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life, that somewhere in salt of the earth Lenox, Alabama, my face is on a hat that Kent Hovind might put on his head. Score one for my memory. Damn it. <sighs> Shoot. Well, we could have been fighting already. All right. Okay, we need some leather. Okay, we only have the rag tunic. And we can't... Maybe it takes an upgraded? I don't even think we have the upgrades yet. But we have the tanning rack. I wonder if you need the... I can't remember if you need the tanning rack or not. I mean, we could just fight him anyways. I guess we don't need... I guess we don't need any of that stuff. Canton, that's so weird. It is really weird, isn't it? I don't know who sent it to him. My sneaking suspicion is that it's Standing for Truth that sent it to him. Because Standing for Truth uh, has reposted the video of Ken Kent opening it. Which makes me kind of think that he gave it to him. Which is... <laughs> I'm kind of like, okay. I mean, here I didn't even know. I'll never forget Professor Dan telling Hovind airplanes are not replicating organisms. True. They're not. They are not. I'm not Hawaiian enough either. I don't think I could work. Work Ken's outfit. He's too impressive. That kind of energy is just... My worst nightmare is I wake up in the middle of the night. Ken is in my room. Sorry, Kent Hovind. Not Ken. Not Ken Ham. Kent Hovind is in my room. He's in his Hawaiian shirt, and he's just got, like, a cartoonishly large mallet. He whacks me. Whack an atheist, you know? Uh, and he's, like, vibe check as he does it, killing me instantly. I prefer Banana Man over Kentoven, TBH. 
Yeah, that's fair. Ray Comfort seems like a nicer guy, that's for sure. Well, we're probably going to lose this fight, you guys. Because I don't have the leather armor. But the key here is going to be not getting hit and roasting these necktails, which I forgot to do. Tis scurry. He does have more memes there, Dapper. No, Kent is not Hawaiian. That would be really funny, though. If he was. Hilarious, some might say. Okay, once we cook these necktails, we're just gonna risk it. We're gonna risk it. We're gonna go fight the deer god. We're gonna have to go epic gamer mode. Ray Comfort is nicer on the outside, but he's blatantly dishonest and edits videos to make debate opponents look bad out of context. I think you're gonna be hard-pressed to find a creationist that does creationism stuff for a living that isn't dishonest. You know? I hate to say it, but that's a blatant truth, honestly, I think. A brute fact. I don't think you can do what, like, Kent Hoven does for so for that long and not ac just accidentally pick up knowledge along the way. Like, by osmosis or something. Y you would think that he would pick something up and not use the same arguments over and over and over again. Or you got the guys like Andrew Snelling, whose professional job it is to do geology and who does good, fine geology in his secular context when he's out there doing secular stuff, but then completely does a 180 when he does his creationism stuff. Hunt his kin. Yeah, I think... Uh, it sucks. It sucks to say. But I think a lot of these guys are... They don't care about the answers. They care about the illusion of giving an answer. The illusion of looking like they have one. Which is why when you see like a response video from some of these guys, um, it'll be really half-assed. <laughs> like when Kent Hovind responds like Pologia or something. Pologia. It's usually half-assed. Uh, because to answer it in its full would be to risk being exposed to your lack of answers. All right, we're fighting him. Oh my god, where's my bow? Oh my god, did I leave my bow? Oh, this is not good. We've got to go back for the bow. We... <laughs> we... <laughs> we forgot the bow. How could this happen? Oh my god, we're gonna have to do some epic, some epic maneuvering here. Oh my god, is he coming after- Oh my god, <laughs> he's- He's right there. How could I let this happen? Alright, okay, we've gotta kite him back away. He just almost one-shotted me. We're gonna lead him away. We've gotta lead him back to the top where we can dodge him a bit easier. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, no, no. See, I want to be very clear about something. I, I, left, I left the bow on purpose. Because I wanted this to be a, a gamer challenge. Okay, now we're armed. We're armed and dangerous. Okay, it's going to be all about kiting him around. Okay, we're gonna be able to peck away. I think we're gonna maybe be okay. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I don't know. I don't want to embarrass myself in front of you guys. I don't want you to find out I might not actually be as epic of a gamer as I may have led you to believe. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not sure that that was an honest hitbox right there. That's a killer shot. Okay, really? The boar? I told... I don't know if I was clear enough previously, but boars in this game are evil. There is no justification for them to come out of nowhere and kick my ass like that. Oh, I'm getting ganked by this dude. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. The boar... 
is absent. Okay. I like when he goes in for those physical hits. When he's physically hitting like that, he can't be focused on where I'm at. Oh, I don't like that one. Ooh, get out of the way. Naturally, the fucking Graylings are here too, though. Which is really, really epic. Really cool. Really fair. Love, love that. I just, I love that. Ooh, that almost yoinked me good. All right. We can do this. We can do this. All right. We got to get some stamina going here. Okay. I don't know, guys. Send that one to the jury. I don't think that was a fair hit. And how come his attacks don't hurt the Graylings? You're telling me that little dork right there is just immune to electricity? I'm calling fake news. Okay. Lesson learned. You don't want to be near the deer, and you don't want to be far away from him either. So the trick is being, uh, dead. You can't win. He's too powerful of a deer. Just kidding, we're about to F this boy up. Yeah, we're to, this isn't the nice Lord of the Forest style deer. This is like the mean, chaotic, evil deer. This ain't your grandma's deer. Who did, the, who did he just attack? I think the boar got cocky. Was it a boar? It might have been a grayling. All right, we got this, boys. Maybe not. Maybe not. Got him. Woo! Oh, okay. All right. Very nice. Nice indeed. And look, we did it in, uh... We did it in our bikini, because I forgot to... <laughs> My rag tunic took too much damage. Okay. Thank you, Hugin. Return to the sacrificial stone with your forsaken trophy. Offered as a sacrifice to make the gods smile upon you. They are the Nephilim of Valheim. The poor deer, says the venerable bead. Do not feel sorry for him. Did you see how he was just kicking me around like I was nothing? That deer's gonna be fine. Another really fun and fair thing about Valheim uh, is that anytime it rains, you're debuffed. Like, your stamina just it does not work very well. It regenerates at, like, half speed or something like that. Okay, where's the flippin' altar? Okay, it's over here. Cool. Deer are literally the size of horses. <laughs> Deer are not literally the size of horses. Deer are... Horses are much scarier than deer are. I will, I will admit to that. Horses are something else entirely. Okay. Now, trophy hook. There it is. So now we can activate our power. And we can benefit, I guess, from... From the Aikthir... Ichthyr powers. Valheim is discount Valhalla. Objectively, yes, but I actually enjoyed a bit more. The co-op in this game with friends is very fun. We don't follow Hugen, Woody. Hugen is Hugen. He's always trying to get my goat. Instead, we're going inside to our cozy and freezing cold shed. Uh, to fix my rag tunic. Okay, some deer are as scary as horses, Dapper. But, like, horses are kind of a different entity entirely. Horses, horses aren't here to joke around. No problem, Canton. Path of Exile, do it. Um, cool. 
Okay, so the fun thing about Valheim, you guys, uh, is that when you beat the first boss, you're like a 20th through the game, even though there's like five bosses. Because the next boss, the Elder, requires a lot of preparation. And then the third boss, the Bone Mass, is just ungodly difficult to fight as a single player. So let's see here. Beds need a nearby fire. You can mune in. I can never remember which one is. Yeah, I can't either. How come there hasn't been a horse kaiju before? True, Fernando. True. That's the real discourse. That's that's what I'm here for. Where where are the horse kaiju? Where are the ruminant kaiju? You know? How come how come we don't have any good ruminant kaiju? It's all cool reptiles. Naturally, big monkey, I'm fine with, but... You know, we need some equal opportunity kaiju in the house. Moose cavalry? I can't even imagine. Bone mass killed us without taking any damage. Let me tell you something, Dirksen. I beat the bone mass by myself, and it took me, like, probably... I probably died 12 times, maybe more. Um... And I had to resort to creating a series of tree houses to arch it from. It was a horrible experience. Zero out of ten. Don't recommend. One of the bosses is Modor, which means mother in Swedish. Yeah, it's, a, it's uh, the dragon. Be wary of the weather. Thanks, Hugin. Real awesome tip there, my bud. My pal. My guy. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I love that freaking gray dwarfs can just come to my house. Look how little damage I do to him. Get out of here. The good news is now we can make pickaxes and we can start to venture into the dark forest. I'm unsure why we are unable to make leather. What am I missing? We've got resin. We've got leather scraps. We've got deer hides. Yeah, Derrickson, it was not fun. And and the whole point was, my fiancé was like, you're going to play the whole game? Because I told him, I was like, I'm going to play the game, and I'm going to get as good as the rest of you guys. That's absolutely my goal. Uh, because I started playing after them. And I can't sleep. Because I didn't put the fire in the house. Well, we're just going to run around in the rain then until it stops. Anyways, I told him that I was going to play the game myself. I was like, or I'm going to play this game. I'm going to beat the game. He was like, why? Just, why would you do that? And I was like, because I'm, I'm petty and I have something to prove. Um, looking back, it wasn't worth it at all. Fighting the bone mass sucks. Fighting the Elder sucked, too, come to think of it. It wasn't nearly as bad as the Bone Mats, but it wasn't fun. And I didn't build a portal close by, either, so that made it even worse. Which is a bad deal. Can't use leather scraps to make leather, only deer hide. Rodent, no last name. What are the ingredients? What am I missing? Because I've got 12 deer hide here. It's because you are a gamer, that's true. I am a gamer. I am absolutely a gamer. You think crustacean? Yeah. Yeah, Silas. Silas sick. As a kaiju. I mean, naturally, I think you guys can probably already guess my favorite kaiju. Although I don't know his mine. It's Kong, obviously, but I also do like, and Dapper can tell you which one it is. That mammoth, uh, Calicathere looking guy? Like that one too. Please. There's a special, cra special crafting table for it? No. No, there shouldn't be. I might need the tanning rack. It might be a workbench improvement. Oh my god, is it a workbench improvement? The behemoth. There we go. Oh, I really hope it's not. 
Okay, that's fine. We can collect enough wooden flint to make a chopping block. That's That should be a piece of cake. How much... Okay, wood is easy. But flint is easy too, just not in the rain. Um, okay, we're already good on wood, so now we just need some flint. The good news is we can't see anything because it's raining outside and it's also nighttime. Elephant Calicathir. That's just such a badass design. An elephant Calicathir. Yeah, craft. Okay, I should have known. Over here being a mega dingus. I just walked into a freaking herdivore. Awesome. Gaming is my passion. My personal favorite memory of Valheim is realizing I found a realizing I found kite a troll. Yeah, yep. Until I murdered him. Yeah, kiting a troll is uh, it's fun. I like the trolls in this game. They're kind of like big losers, you know? Okay, I have a dog that needs to go to go outside. Um, you guys might have to give me a minute. But hold on just a sec. Let me get in my house and my and I'll let the dog out. Okay, we are safely in the house. Well, let me close the door. Home sweet home and our horrible little shack. And you know what? I think we might end the stream. I think this is a good spot because we beat the deer god and we're doing fine. So let me go over to the, the deal to stop streaming. Guys, thank you for being here. Um, if you like this kind of thing, leave a like and let me know in the comments. Uh, I had a 5% dislike ratio on my Video Games or Video Lame uh, poll. So if you're interested, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video game or stream or whatever for this kind of thing. It's just a fun opportunity to hang out with you guys and chat and whatever. Um, so let me know. I think it would be fun. This was very enjoyable for me. This was cathartic. Um, so thank you so much, and don't forget, sometime this week, at an indeterminate time period, we will be playing, uh, Ancestors, and we'll also see how fun that goes, so thank you again, and stay gentle and stay modern. Gamer off.